Now, prior to starting this demo, I have taken the physical access point. I held down the reset button for 20 to 30 seconds. It flashed blue lights and then it went red to tell me that it reset. I'd then gone in and typed in reload. So it's reloaded the factory D4 settings. And so now if I do show running config, you can see the D4 factory settings for this particular access point. And here you can see the interface, the BVI interface, has no IP address associated with it. So the first thing I want to do is to assign it an IP address. So to do that, I do config T. And then I go into the interface BVI 1. I then simply give it an address. And in this case, I'm going to give it 192.168.70.101. And that's all I need to do to give the access point an IP address. What I can now do is I can access that access point via the IP address via a browser. So let me just save this config. And now let's go to my browser. So I've now connected my computer directly to the access point through the Ethernet cable and I brought out my Internet Explorer. And now I can type in the IP address that I assigned the access point. Key in the password. And you can see now that I've been able to get in to the access point web GUI. So I can select the express setup and then I can start to configure my access point. And you can see here that it's already shown the static IP address. And so I can give it a host name. I'm going to leave it with the static IP address for the moment. Here's where I can set up the SNMP. Coming down, you can see I can set up the role. I'm going to leave it as access point. And here I can define, do I want to set this radio to be optimized for throughput, which will turn off the lower data rates and therefore improve the average data rate that my users experience. And here's my range, which will support the lower data rates and maximize the coverage of my cell radius, or I can leave it with the default. This here is for my 802.11 gigahertz radio and down here you can see I could do the same for my 5 gigahertz radio. The internet extensions would be things like load balancing, message integrity check. If I had a network that had a lot of non-Cisco client devices, I may actually disable that feature because it can improve performance if I do that. So I can select here my SSID. So maybe I want to have this for employee. I can say yes, I want it broadcasted in the beacon. And here I can set up the VLAN. So maybe I want to set this up on VLAN 70. And here is my option if I want to set up a native VLAN. In this case, I'm not going to do that down. You can see the security options that I have. In this demo, I'm just going to leave it as no security. But you have the opportunity here to set up EAP authentication or WPA. And then I hit apply. 
And if we scroll down a bit, you can see now that my SSID is now shown down here and is successfully been set up. I can then go back up here. So if I want to set up another SSID, I can do that. I key in here the word guest. We won't have this one broadcasted in the beacon. And here I'll set it up on VLAN 80. I'll leave it as no security. Click apply. Hit OK. And now you can see at the bottom here, I have two SSIDs set up with two different VLANs. I can now go here over to my network interfaces. And you can see here that my radios are down. So they're down by default. And so I want to enable them. So this is my 2.4 and this is my 5 gigahertz. And I'm going to enable the 2.4. I go into settings. And here is where I will enable the radio. So I'll select that. The role, of course, is as an access point. And here you can see if I want to turn off any of the data rates, I can do that here. Just going to leave that. I can change the transmit power here and also the power that the client can transmit at. Now when you're configuring your access points, do make sure you give it time to populate the settings. Like here it's got settings. If you don't, what's going to happen is that you'll start keying in the settings and then they will disappear. So we're going to enable the radio, which is a good idea. And here you can see I set it up as the default. So these are the data rates that have been enabled. You can see the power settings. I would always change the power settings, uh, both in a lab environment, there's no reason to have um, really high power, um, but also you never really want to deploy at maximum power either because you always want an ability to increase your power level and you've also got to cater for your lowest level devices that are on the network. Here I can choose the channel that I want to operate on Let's say I actually want to set it up for channel 6, maybe. I can define the channel width. This is an 802.11n, so I can go up to 40 megahertz if I want. And here are some of the other settings I can go and set up regarding my antennas and other attributes. So always remember to click Apply. Now I want to go in and configure my 5 gigahertz radio. Click Settings. And again, give it a while to populate. There we go. And then I can select Enable to enable this radio. So it's going to be on. Again, I, the same settings that you saw in the 2.4 gigahertz band. Here, of course, I can have dynamic frequency selection in the 5 gigahertz band. But other than that, you're going to find it's exactly the same. Select Apply. So you've now seen how I can go in, do a quick express setup, uh, including the security settings, and then I can go on into the radio interface and enable my radios. I've come back here to my PuTTY interface where I still have my access point configured, and you can see that the settings have been <laughs> merrily happily tuning away, and so now we can do a return on this.
you can see that it now has its name autonomous which is awesome and I can do a show running config you can now see here my SSID set up on my VLAN here and here's my guest SSID set up on VLAN 80 so I'm now going to go ahead and connect with my laptop to the access point and there you see that my laptop my Acer laptop has successfully connected to the access point coming in through the SSID employee. I have now set up a guest profile because remember the guest is not set up in the to broadcast so I had to set up a profile called guest to try and connect to guest so I'm now going to connect to that and there you go I have now connected to the guest network so I've <laughs> confirmed that both of them are working so we have now finished the demo we have successfully set up my access point we've given it an IP address we've configured the basic settings, the security settings, I enabled my radios, I set up two SSIDs, one was broadcasted, one was hidden, and I was able to connect to both of them from my laptop.